Hey everybody, how are you doing today? I hope that you are having a great day. And um, I wanted to continue discussion of Revelation. I've gone so far as Revelation chapter 1 and verse 16. And there um, our Lord is said to be uh, a radiant. Um, his countenance, countenance shines as the sun um, in its full power. And we know that the sun is um, a source of light, it sustains life, it gives us warmth, and all of those things we can see um, our Lord does. He is the source of our spiritual light, he sustains life in the sense that he brought back what Adam lost and we can have everlasting life because of what he did for us. And that was an expression of his love as well, great warmth. So um, that basically speaks for itself. But again, I wanted to look particularly at what it says there about this long two-edged sword protruding out of his mouth. And again, a uh, sword is an obvious symbolism for warfare and this would then be alluding to a spiritual warfare as this sword is protruding from his mouth. This is about a war of words and a war um, of truth over darkness. And when we look at Matthew chapter 24, there we see our Lord speak of wars and reports of wars and he said the sign of the conclusion of the last days would be a war where nation ri rises against nation and watchtowers in error to apply this to outside in the world what Matthew chapter 24 is talking about is a spiritual warfare that occurs within the Christian congregation and we, we look at Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16 it says therefore repent if you do not I am coming to you quickly and I will war with them with a the long sword of my mouth so it's clear from Revelation chapter 2 and verse 16 that there's a spiritual warfare gonna happen within the Christian congregation and we can compare Matthew chapter 24 and also Luke 21. Two aspects of the message that was given to these seven congregations. If we look at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you that you have there. Those holding fast the teaching of Balaam, who, who went teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel. So it speaks of a stumbling going on within the Christian congregation. And if we look at Matthew chapter 24, okay, Matthew chapter 24, um, and verse 10, it says there, then also many will be stumbled and will betray one another. Yeah, so we see stumbling in Revelation and we in within the Christian congregation and we see stump, stumbling in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 10. If we look at Revelation chapter 2, verses 10 and 22. Do not be afraid of the things you are about to suffer. Look, the devil will keep on throwing some of you into prison that you may be fully put to the test. And that you may have tribulation ten days. And verse 22. Look I'm about to throw her into a sick bed. And those committing adultery with her into great tribulation. So this was uh, to the to congregation in Smyrna and Thyatira. Speaking of tribulation and great tribulation. And if we look at Matthew chapter 24. And verse um Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9. Then people will deliver you up to tribulation and, and will kill you. 
and I think also in Matthew chapter 24 um, it speaks of great tribulation in verse 21 for then there will be great tribulation so it's the same as in, Re in Revelation chapter 2 speaking of tribulation and great tribulation if we look at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 23 it says and her children I will kill with de de deadly plague again that was the congregation of Thyatira um, we can compare that to Luke chapter 21 that's Luke chapter 21 verse 11 and it says there and you must say no wrong Luke 21 and verse 11 and there will be great earthquakes in the one place after another pestilences so plagues pestilences and also in Luke chapter 21 and verse 11 it mentions earthquakes and in Revelation it speaks of a great earthquake that's Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 11 and Revelation chapter 16 and also Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7 speaks of one place after another well it says and earthquakes in one place after another so all the things that we see mentioned in the book of Revelation we see in the book of Matthew um, 24 and Luke 21 stumbling earthquakes tribulation great tribulation um, and also um, warfare um, and a lack of love as well if we look at Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 it says um, and because of the increasing of lawlessness the love of the greater will the, the love of the greater number will cool off um, and in Revelation it speaks of I can't see the scripture right now the, because um, the, the congregation is counselled for um, l losing the love that they had at first and we see that this has happened in Watchtower the love of the great number is cooled off for our Lord and they love the congregation they love the organisation uh, they love the governing body leaders and that lack of love has happened because of the increasing of lawlessness the emphasis put on the organization the emphasis put on what's written in the watchtower as opposed to what's written in God's word um, the emphasis put on all the erroneous teachings for example upholding the two witness rule um, the destroying of families through unscriptural shunning practice um, we can look back in the history of the organization the breaking of the covenant in 1935 when the organization taught that um, certain members must not partake of the emblems and more recently the lawlessness in the sense that the governing body have said they only are the faithful and discreet slave and um, we can see from the book of Revelation the error of that teaching because if we look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 it says there a revelation by Yeshua Christ which God gave him to show his slaves things that must shortly take place and he sent forth his angel and presented it in signs through him to his slave John so we can see that all the members of the Christian congregation um, are slaves are this composite slave when you're doing the will of the Lord subjecting yourself to him you are his slave his servant so um, that is that can be put down to an increasing of lawlessness that what, what the watchtower did in 2012 2013 saying that only the governing body are this faithful and discreet slave so watchtower <coughs> has 
incurred judgment upon itself. Since the late 19th century, this organization has stood firmly upon the earth. Watchtower has stood firmly upon elementary truths of God's word. These truths are unshakable, they are solid, and they are as sure as the ground that we walk on. The Watchtower, though, have piled layer upon layer of error on top of solid, sure, spiritual truths. So, what's going to happen is that these um, erroneous truths will be shaken off. That's when this great earthquake happens. And they're going to be shaken off to the extent that Watchtower will be totally destroyed. If we look at Ezekiel chapter 26 and verse 21, it says, Sudden terrors are what I shall make you, and you will not be. So Watchtower is going to be completely gone. And you will be sought for, but you will you will no more be found to time indefinite, is the utterance of the Sovereign Lord, Yah. And if we go over to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 19. As for all those knowing you among the peoples, they will certainly stare in amazement at you. Sudden terrors are what you must become, and you will be no more to time indefinite. So, this is what is going to happen to Watchtower. Watchtower is going to be completely gone. There's not going to be any remains of it left whatsoever. And Ezekiel chapter 26 and verse 21 speaks of sudden terrors. And Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 19 again speaks of sudden terrors. Now if we go forward to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 21, we can read how the Apostle John responded to this appearance of our Lord. It says, And when I saw him, I fell as dead at his feet. And he laid his right hand upon me and said, Do not be fearful. So really, what happened here to the Apostle John? And he became faint out of fear. This is what is going to happen to Jehovah Witnesses when they see what is coming upon their organization. Many amongst them will become faint out of fear and expectation of what is coming upon their inhabited earth. They will become faint and out of fear and expectation of what is becoming upon their organization that has been built up upon the um, established earth of solid and sure elementary truths. And when we look at Revelation chapter 21, sorry, Revelation chapter 18, and verse 21, which says, and a strong angel lifted up a stone like a great millstone and hurled it into the sea, saying, Thus with a swift pitch will Babylon the great city be hurled down and never, and she will never be found again. So Watchtower has made itself part of Babylon the Great, the world empire of false religion. It stands on elementary truths and says we have the truth, but it doesn't. It stands on elementary truth and has covered those elementary truths with loads of muck. It's covered those elementary truths with um, erroneous uh, teaching. And it has covered those elementary truths with, um, with judgment, basically. I, think, um, I lost my thought there a little bit. But the point is that Watchtower stands on elementary truth. It stands on 
truth that in a spiritual sense is Eden. It's funny that they, Jehovah's Witnesses speak of them be, be, selves being in a spiritual paradise. And um, I see why they say that. Uh, but they've been misled. Um, the elementary truths that they stand upon are sure and solid and are a reliable foundation. And they will remain that they are light from our Lord who shines as brightly as the sun. And that, that, that those elementary truths won't ever grow dim. But Watchtower has covered those elementary truths in a lot of darkness and that darkness um, that darkness will be very soon to be exposed and when it happens uh, that's when many in the organization will see will discern the presence of our Lord that he has come to judge and they will become faint out of fear and expectation of the things coming upon their organization because the Watchtower organization is destined for destruction. The Watchtower organization will fulfill Ezekiel chapter 26 and verse 21. And it will be completely gone. It will never be inhabited again. It's funny because I saw two videos recently. And both of these videos mention how Ezekiel is a prophecy that failed to be fulfilled. Because Babylon was rebuilt again. But I believe that the fulfillment, the prophetic fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 26 is the same as Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 19. Speaking of Satan and Watchtower, which is Satan's organization. And they, they're, they're, that will be fulfilled in the last days. Ezekiel chapter 26. And Ezekiel chapter 28 will be fulfilled in the last days in fulfillment of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 21, which applies in the last days. And it says that um, this great city will be hurled down and she will never be found again. And this great city is Watchtower. It's not the world empire of false religion. Um, what um, Babylon the Great does, this harlot that rides the beast, it puts, it contextualizes the condition of Watchtower, that it has made itself like a political power that um, rides. Um, and it, it's made itself a false religion. Both of these things apply to Watchtower. And um, just as uh, the, the beast, the kings, turn on this harlot, Watchtower is going to turn on itself. That those in positions of authority within Watchtower will... Um, Possibly mut mutiny um, will maybe uh, see that the leaders are removed from their position of authority. I can't say exactly how it's going to play out. I can't say more than what is written in Re Revelation. It says, for God will put it into the hearts of kings to carry out his thought, even to carry out their one thought. Um by giving the um, sorry, I've lost my thought there. By giving their kingdom to the wild beasts until the words of God will have been accomplished. And the woman whom you saw means the great city that has a kingdom over the kings of the earth. So this woman um, has um, authority over those within the Watchtower organization. They've made themselves part of this harlot, woman, false religion. Babylon the Great, but they've also made themselves like a political um, entity, i.e. the kings. They're described as kings, and the kings uh, who hold the power within the Watchtower organization 
will eventually um, turn on it. And I believe that they'll turn on the organisation to the extent that it will be completely dissolved. I know it sounds a bit far-fetched now, um, but watchtower's days are numbered and it will be destroyed, it will destroy itself, it will dissolve itself. Um, but for now the war continues. Um, the stumbling, the lack of love, the bowing down to the leaders, the bowing down to the organisation. Um, but this great earthquake is coming and when this um, earthquake happens upon the Watchtower organisation, as I've said, many will become faint out of fear um, because they will see the demise of the organisation and it will happen um, within the eyes of the whole world. The whole world will look upon Watchtower and see what what will become of this great city when it comes to nothing. Alright, I think that's um, covered for today. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.